Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we'll go through how to create a complete login form using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. I'll be walking through the code line by line and explain how everything works and how we can put together everything to create a functional login page. Let's get started. Here I have the project folder and inside we have four different files. The first one is index.html, style.css, main.js and the background image I'll be using to create the login page. So if you need this image, you can download it from the description below. So let's type in exclamation enter. So this gives us the structure to the HTML. Here I have the doc type HTML declaration. So this informs the browser that our document is HTML5 document. So the next line tells that the language is English set to English. And then inside head, I have meta character set. So this is what we define for the character encoding. And this ensures our text displays correctly. Next, we have the meta name equal to viewport, content width equal to device width, and initial scale is one. So this makes our page responsive on different screens with for different sizes. So uh, we also have to include a link from the remix icon. So just go to remixicon.com, click the GitHub link. So it takes you to this page. From here, you can just copy the CDN link and place it over our index.html. So I'm just copy pasting it. Now let's give the title Salo Studios login page. So before that, I also want to include the style.css. So I'll just copy. So now I have the style.css link as well. Okay, so now let's go into the body. So if you want to see how it looks, just create the live page. So here we have the Salo Studios login page given. So now let's go to body. So I'm going to paste the code for easy explanation so let me explain this code so the first line is the div class container the login container so this is the main div so that wraps our entire form and centers it on the page Next, we have the form action, a class a login form. So this form itself, which will send the data to the server when submitted. Next, we have the uh, H1 tag, which is our heading. So title of the form, sign in. Now, inside this uh, H1, we have another div, which is the class form group. So the span is using a uh, user line three. So you can go to the remix icon again. Here I just type in user So if you come down, so this is the icon I'm using. So just copy and paste over there. So this pan contains a user icon, which will enhance the input fields appearance. Next, we have the class input wrapper. So this wraps the input and label together for a better control over their uh, behavior. 
Next we have the placeholder and uh, the ID is set to name. So this is the name of the input field for the user's name. Next we have the label for name. So the label is associated with the name input. And then we close the dev, this dev class. And next we can move to the next one which is the form group. Again I create a form group. And inside here I put in the lock to line. So I copied the same thing from the remix icon. Let me go to remix icon. And type in lock. So this is the lock screen I'm using. So if you just click here, you can see the code, the line, the class. So you can copy and paste it over to the HTML page. So lock to line. And similarly, I have the input wrapper. And here I have the input text to the form, which is the password. And the label is set to password. Now next, I have the toggle password. So we are going to create the same thing. So using span, just go to the remix icon. And you can type I. So yeah, you can copy whatever, whichever you like. So and paste it over there. Now, next, we have the form actions. So this is uh, telling uh, to remember the password or not. So we can just uh, give it as an input type checkbox. And the label is given as remember me. So we are going to close this div class. Next, we have the href. So this is the class which says forget password. Then inside that we have a submit button, which is called login. Do you have an account or not? So this is the sign in page. So we have the first sign in heading. Next we have the line where we specify the name, the icon, password, the I symbol, the remember me checkbox, forget password, a login button and register as a link. So now let's, uh, this, these are not functional anything or anything. So just uh, we can just go to the CSS file to start coding the styling sheet. So once we go to the CSS, we save this. Now let's start to code our CSS file. Let's go to the browser. I want to copy the fonts. So just go to googlefonts.com and then you can search whichever fonts that you want to use for your style. Go to this, get embed code, import, import this and paste it over here. Okay. So we have imported the Poppins font from the Google to style our text. Now, next we have to include the root. So I have specified the text color, text dark, text right, light and white. So we define the custom CSS variables for the colors that we'll be using throughout the design. So this is this makes it easier to maintain and change colors later if needed. Next we have the padding section. So we reset the default padding and margin for all the elements and we ensure that the padding and the borders are included in the elements total width and height. And next we have the body. 
and we call the fawn family poppins so we from this we apply the poppins fawn to the entire body of the document next we have called the log have to call the login container so here the login container class ensures that our form is created vertically and horizontally on the page with a background image so this image uh, the one which i have already specified here so it uses this image covering the entire viewport which we specified in the index page so this is a container i'm using to assign it in the center next we have the login form so login form also has to spe be specified so this is the login form i'm going to use the same so i have specified the width max width padding margin extra so this login form defines the style of our form including the size padding and animation so also i all added the fade in animation which creates a smooth uh, effect for us when we have a entrance effect in when the page loads next we are going to add the styling for the login form so this is the main login form let's create the login form styling so here i have specified the width padding margin and the animation so the fade in animation creates a smooth transition effect when the page loads so entire login form define this class defines the style of our form how it it's going to look the size the padding and the animation next let's copy the fade in effect animation so here this defines the fade in animation gradually increasing the form's opacity and moving it into the place now let's create the login form h1 so we have the heading 1 which is defined here so this is our h1 so let's style h1 so here i have specified the heading inside where i am setting it uh, a color to it which is where and then i am aligning it to aligning it to center next we are going to use the next one is a form group styling for the form group so this class which i added is going to um, ensure that each input field and its associated icon are aligned and spaced correctly with the border below them so it's giving the padding size the gap between the text and the text field text box and i'm giving the variable the text variable white so this is the class defined for the form group next i'm also giving the input wrapper class so this class is going to so this is the input wrapper class which is going to um allow the class to allow it to position the label and the input field relative to each other so it is making easier to control during their interaction and then let's have uh add the span styling so this class is for the span so we style the icons inside each group setting the size and the color so the font size is set to 1.25 and the color is set to white and then let's uh, add the wrapper label so for the label so the label inside the input wrapper is absolutely positioned and the transition and its transition smoothly when the input is focused or filled so i am giving the transition to 0.3 so 
this is the input wrapper label and finally we have the input wrapper placeholder class this is this style these styles move the label about the input field when the user interacts with it so it's creating a neat floating label effect next i have the input wrapper for the input i'm going to give so here the input fields are styled to be full width 100 percent with no borders and allowing the background to show as a transparent one and now let's give the toggle password so the cursor so this toggle password element changes the cursor to a pointer indicating it's it has a clickable one next i'm going to give the next form actions which is this the remember me and the forgot password so the rem first one is the form actions so this form action class ensures that the remember me checkbox and the forget password link are aligned and spaced properly so remember me and forget password so i'm adding it to align them correctly next i have to align remember me so this is remember me class which aligns the checkbox and the label next to each other with some spacing phi and then we have the remember me label so the label is uh, we style the label to hover and uh, uh, to add the uh, checkbox and it adds a hover effect and then we have the checkbox type so this checkbox type matches the overall design so it's set to white and the um, color is set the, the text color is set to text dark and then i have the forget password link as a link so this link is styled to match the design and also includes the hover effect finally the button so we have the submit button and the register so for the submit button so we have to add this class so this style button will have the specific attributes so with a solid white background so with no borders with set to 100 and then uh, we have also created a transition effect for the button and finally we have the register class style so we given the register class this styles the text at the bottom so which encourages users to sign up if they don't have an account and this register the link inside the register class is styled to match the form rest of the form and uh, with no underline and then just white text so this is the entire style sheet let's save it so now let's go to main.js so here in main.js i'm going to give the toggle button so constant toggle button is set to document dot get element by id and we pass in the toggle password here so we start by selecting the element that will toggle the password visibility next we add a click event using this so right now here we add a click event listener so this is add event listener button 
to our toggle button so when clicked it checks the current type of the password input so if it's text meaning the password is visible we change it back to the password and switch the icon to a closed eye so if if it's password then we switch it to the text to make the password visible and change the icon to the open eye and this simple script provides a nice user interface by allowing them to view or hide their password as needed now save everything okay now let's see how our page looks okay looks good so i can show you how it looks in the web page the safari browser okay so here we could see that uh, my sign in page have uh, a bit um, it's not kind of blur here so i want to create the blur effect for my form so i go to the visual so here in the normal uh, browser it doesn't have any problem only for the safari i think i got this issue so i am going to have this line added to the login form to add the backdrop blur so now let's go and check it out yeah so now it looks pretty good okay now since we have created the web form let's go to develop and then enter responsive design mode so here this is how it looks in a desktop so this is completely responsive and this is how it looks on a phone so this is our responsive ui which we created just so that's it and we have walked through the entire code base for this login form covering everything from the html structure to the css styling and javascript interactively so now i hope you found this tutorial helpful if you did don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more development uh, tutorials thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video